For this video, I'll be making phenytoin, which is an anti-seizure medication. It's often sold under the brand name Dilantin, and it's also used to treat other things like heart arrhythmias and neuropathic pain. One of the major benefits of phenytoin is that it can help control seizures, but it doesn't have the sedative effect that some of the other medications can have. It's definitely by no means perfect though, and it has a slew of side effects ranging from nausea to things like liver damage. What I think's cool is that the entire drug can be built from two natural sources, bitter almond oil and urine. Bitter almond oil is nearly pure benzaldehyde, and I'll be using it directly without any purification. I'll start by reacting it with itself to make something called benzoin, which will then be oxidized to benzyl using nitric acid. For the last step, I'll react it with urea, which I extracted from my own urine in a previous video. If you're interested in checking out that honestly pretty gross project, there's a link in the description. Before I start, I just wanted to mention that I finally made some t-shirts for the channel. They'll only be available for the next three days though, and I'm not exactly sure when I'll be selling them again. So if you want to support the channel and pick one up, you can go to the link on the screen here, or click the one in the description. Anyway, to start things off, I needed to make the catalyst for the reaction, which involved making two solutions. For the first one, I added 0.84 grams of sodium hydroxide to 7 mils of water. It all dissolved with just a bit of mixing, and then I temporarily placed it on the side. For the second one, I added 3.5 grams of thiamine hydrochloride, followed by 8 mils of water. I swirled it around until it all disappeared, and then I added 35 mils of 95% ethanol. Both solutions were put in the freezer, and I took them out when they were around 0 C. With some good stirring, the base solution was slowly added to the thiamine hydrochloride, and a yellow color started to appear. The reaction going on here was between the sodium hydroxide and the thiamine hydrochloride to make just thiamine, which was the active catalyst. When I was done adding it, I let it stir for a bit, and then I poured in 20 mils of the bitter almond oil. Before moving on, I quickly checked the pH to make sure that it was between 8 and 9. This reaction can be quite sensitive, and if it's not within this bracket, the yield would probably be affected. Based on my pH papers, it all seemed to be good, but they aren't exactly super accurate, so I guess we'll see. The entire beaker was then put in a water bath at around 60 C. After sitting there for about 15 minutes though, I was concerned that too much ethanol would evaporate off, so I put a flask with cold water on top of it. As I mentioned earlier, bitter almond oil is almost entirely made of benzaldehyde. And under these conditions, in the presence of the thymine catalyst, two benzaldehyde molecules will condense together to form benzoin. I left it in the water bath for about 90 minutes, and then I took it out and let it cool. As it cooled to room temperature, benzoin slowly crystallized out. To get out as much as possible, I let it sit in an ice bath for about 30 minutes. I then added it to my vacuum filter and pulled away the liquid. The crude benzoin was transferred to a beaker and I recrystallized it using 95% ethanol. This was just done to clean it up a bit and to make it as pure as possible. When everything had dissolved, I took it off the hot plate, let it cool, and waited for the crystals to form. When it got to about room temperature, I put it in the freezer for a couple hours just to get out as much as possible. The benzoin was again filtered off, and I washed it with some ice-cold ethanol. I also left my pump on for about 20 minutes, just to really dry it up. My final yield of nice and dry benzoin was 4.95 grams, which was a terrible percent yield of only 24%. As far as I know, this reaction isn't super efficient, but this is still a really low yield. I'm not exactly sure why it was so low, but I think it's for a few reasons. First of all, this reaction is pretty sensitive to pH, and if it's either too high or too low, it can affect the yield. My pH papers weren't super accurate, so it was hard to get it in this bracket, and it may have been outside it. Secondly, I think I just used way too much ethanol to recrystallize it, which resulted in a loss. And the last reason is that bitter almond oil is usually nearly pure benzaldehyde, but I didn't purify it before using it, so that might have affected things as well. I considered redoing it to try to get a better yield, but in the end, I decided it wasn't really worth it because I still had more than enough to work with. The next thing I needed to do was to oxidize it to benzyl. Into a beaker, I poured 17 mils of concentrated nitric acid and added the benzoin in small portions. 
I let it mix for a couple minutes, and then I put the beaker in a water bath at around 70 C. As it heated up, the nitric acid started reacting with the benzoin to make benzyl and nitrogen dioxide gas. Initially, the nitrogen dioxide just caused the mixture to change to an orange color, but eventually it does start letting off the nice orange-red gas. As a safety point, one thing to keep in mind is that this stuff is really dangerous to breathe, so it's important to have proper ventilation when doing this. I kept the reaction going until it looked like it wasn't letting off any more gas, which took about an hour. I took it out of the water bath, let it cool for a few minutes, and without stirring, it separated into two distinct layers. The bottom portion is just the water and acid, and the upper part's the benzyl. To force the benzyl to solidify, I turned on the stirring and I dumped in 50 mils of ice cold water. I let it stir for a few minutes, and then I put it in the freezer to get out as much as possible. The crude benzyl was quickly filtered off, and I transferred everything to a beaker. I poured in a small amount of ethanol, and turned on the stirring and heating. It eventually got to the boiling point, and I added some water to knock down the solubility. When I got to what I felt was a good balance between the ethanol and water, I took it off the hot plate and let it crystallize. Then just like before, I put it in the freezer for a bit, and filtered it off. I also washed the beaker and the crystals with a small amount of ice cold ethanol. I dumped them on some paper to dry for about a day or so, and the final yield was 4.2 grams, which is a percent yield of about 86%. Okay, so now for the last step, where the benzyl is converted to the final phenytoin. To start things off, I just quickly made a concentrated solution of potassium hydroxide by dissolving 3.2 grams in 6 mils of water. I swirled it a bit to get it all to dissolve, and then this was placed on the side for the moment, and I moved on to setting up the reaction. So into the flask, I dumped 2 grams of the benzyl that I just made. Then on top of this, I added 0.96 grams of urea. The reason I only used 2 grams of benzyl instead of the full 4.2 that I just made was because I wanted to use less urea. This reaction isn't very efficient with it, and I only recovered several grams from my urine, so I have to be sparing. Anyway, on top of this, I poured in 50 mils of 95% ethanol and stirred it for a few minutes for things to dissolve. Then I added the concentrated potassium hydroxide solution that I made like a minute ago. It caused an immediate change in color, and a lot of the stuff that was still undissolved started to disappear. Just like the other runs, this reaction needed to be heated, and I set it up for a reflux. I placed the heating mantle below it, and above it I attached a cold water condenser. So I turned on the heating and I brought it to a boil, and I kept boiling it for about 2 hours. The major reaction that was going on here was between the benzyl, the urea, and the potassium hydroxide to make potassium phenytoin. The mixture initially got a lot darker, and this was only about 20 minutes in. At some point though, it started to lighten up again, and this is what it looked like near the end. When it was done, I took it off heating, and I let it cool a bit. Then I dumped it into 50 mils of ice cold water. The flask was also washed with a bit of water to make sure I got out as much as possible. I let it stir for a couple minutes and a precipitate appeared, which was a side product. To get rid of it, it was pretty easy, and I just filtered it through a cotton ball. At this point, all my product was in the form of potassium phenytoin, which was soluble in the solution. To get it out, I added dilute hydrochloric acid to convert it to regular phenytoin, which was insoluble. I kept that in the acid, and I knew I was done when I got to a pH of around 1 or 2. Then I put the whole mixture in the freezer for a couple hours. To separate off the phenytoin, I added it to my vacuum filter and pulled away the liquid. I washed it with some ice cold water to get rid of any acid that remained, and then I transferred it to a beaker. On top of it, I added a stir bar and some ethanol, and I turned on the heating. I then kept adding more in small amounts, until it was all dissolved. I took it off the hot plate, and as it cooled, some really nice white crystals formed. When it eventually got to room temperature, I put it in the freezer overnight. In the morning, I filtered it off, and washed it with a small amount of freezing ethanol. I left the vacuum on to dry it up as much as possible, and then I dumped it onto some paper and left it there for about a day.
My final yield here was 1.18 grams, which was a percent yield of about 49%. To confirm that this was, in fact, phenytoin, I took the melting point of it and compared it to the theoretical. It was extremely close, which told me that it was phenytoin, and that it was relatively pure. All the phenytoin that I have here is in its unsalted form, which is insoluble in water and has to be administered by IV. To take it in pill form, it needs to be converted to a salt, usually sodium phenytoin. It's actually quite simple to do that, and I would just have to react it with a bit of dilute sodium hydroxide, and then evaporate off the water. If I were to convert it with 100% yield to sodium phenytoin, it would give me about 1.3 grams. The average daily adult dose of this drug is 300 milligrams, so what I have here is about 4 days worth. If I had used all the benzyl that I had though, it would have been around 8. So assuming the efficiency of the process stays the same, I can make a month supply from about 75 mils of the bitter almond oil. I think my yields for each step were generally pretty low though, so it could probably be done with much less. Also, in my opinion, using urea for my own urine was cool, but it really wasn't ideal. It's a much better idea to get the urea from an easier and cleaner source, like instant cold packs. Anyway, I think that's about it. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll see you on the next one. As usual, a big thanks goes out to all of my supporters on Patreon. Everyone who supports me can see my videos at least 24 hours before I post them to YouTube. Also, everyone on Patreon can directly message me, and if you support me with $5 or more, you'll get your name at the end like you see here.